Thank you for viewing the presentation. I'm Joe Krieger from Children's of Atlanta, and I will be presenting this fetal echocardiography case, the first of a case series that I would like to start presenting. This is a case of a fetus with tricuspid valve atresia and detransposition of the great arteries. So as with our protocol here at Children's of Atlanta, we start with the transducer on the maternal abdomen with the index marker pointed cephalic on mom toward her head. And in this case, this fetus is in a cephalic presentation. We then transition to this next image, which is a transverse view through the fetal abdomen and thorax, and the way that we do that is rotate the transducer from the previous position to counterclockwise 90 degrees. It should be pointed at maternal right side. And so here I will freeze the image and walk you through our identification of structures within the fetal abdomen as well as up in the thorax. And so we start out here, the very beginning of the sweep, and here is the liver majority of the livers on the right. Again, these are compass points that I've placed here, but with the cephalic presentation, you know that this is left and this is right based on the position of the fetus. And so here's stomach bubble, here is the spleen, spine. The descending thoracic aorta is just to the left of midline on the spine here, and the IVC is up in the liver on the right side. And so as we scroll through, slowly watch, slowly sweep up as we're watching that inferior cable vein, the IVC, where it is going to terminate. And so as we come up to the level of the diaphragm, we're going forward up cephalide in the fetus, it starts to open up at the floor of the right atrium. Here you can see there is the separation with the atrial septum here, left-sided posterior atrium, right-sided anterior right atrium where that IVC has drained into. We haven't seen the SVC, the superior cable vein, uh, yet, so we don't know if this is a morphologic right atrium just yet. We know that the IVC drains to that anterior right atrium. We haven't seen pulmonary veins yet. And then you see here, there's a flap of the foramen of valley bowing from right to left. And then a ventricle there and an outflow tract. And as we sweep forward, we can see the mass of the heart is pointed to the left. And so this is levocardia with the apex of the heart pointed leftward here as shown. And so this is levocardia, normal visceral arrangement. So far, this is what we've been able to gather. We then continue to sweep through the heart. And in this case, we're sweeping cephalad and we're sweeping all the way up to see the great arteries. This is the what we see is the pulmonary artery bifurcation there. And then this other vessel anterior coming from this smaller chamber looks like it, it comes up and does not bifurcate. And at the end of that, you can see what looks like the SVC next to that, what we think is the aorta here. And so if you watch that, it originates or drains into that anterior right atrial chamber here. And so there's the SVC. And so looking now closer at that posterior outflow tract here, which we think may be the pulmonary artery because at the end of this little sweep here, we have a bifurcation. You have what looks like a right pulmonary artery there and a left pulmonary artery here. And the valve looks a little thickened and dysplastic and the subvalvular region, subpulmonary region looks narrowed. And then there's a VSD here that leads to this other chamber, which is much smaller. And then there is that other outflow tract and it becomes the aorta. And so here is the aortic valve. There is a, a nice wide open sub aortic region here. This is actually the VSD. And there's a smaller chamber here, which is anterior and is likely the morphologic right ventricle. It's a little, little better look at the aorta as it arches up into the chest here. And here's a better look here. 
aorta again, and subpulmonary region there. And here is the trachea. And so this, if you watch, this aorta arches to the left of the trachea. Again, this is left, this is right. There's SVC. Nice look here. Again, morphologic left ventricle. Here is the morphologic right atrium. Normal foraminal bowing into the left atrium is actually quite aneurysmal. Uh, and so we're going to want to see what the atrial opening looks like. But left atrium down back here, based on its appearance, and again, we haven't seen the pulmonary veins yet, but this is the right atrium here. Okay, a little closer look at that pulmonary valve. Again, it's not moving very uh, vigorously. It looks like it may be dysplastic and probably um, stenotic. And that's a better look at the parallel arrangement of the outflow tracts here and the aorta here and the posterior pulmonary valve here. And so there you can clearly see that there's a subpulmonary narrowing in this image. And just a, a more thorough evaluation of the pulmonary arteries here, which do arise, uh, this pulmonary artery does arise from the left ventricle. So D position of the great arteries here, again, SVC. There, moving forward, this is the aortic arch here. And again, it does arise and arch to the left of the trachea. And at the end of that sweep is the brachycephalic vein draining normally rightward toward the SVC. Color Doppler helps a lot. Here is the aorta and that continuous flow there is the ductus arteriosus here, mostly anagrade because it's blue. So it's coming from that pulmonary artery here, arising from near where the LPA is and coursing into the descending or the aortic arch near the descending aorta here. So the typical configuration of the ductus arteriosus anagrade in this case. And a focused look at the aortic arch here, back down to the ductus. And so the, here is the pattern through the ductus arteriosus, a nice anagrade flow with anagrade diastolic flow. This tells me that it's probably not going to be a ductal dependent lesion. The outflow of the pulmonary artery is uh, not significantly obstructed enough to cause retrograde flow in the ductus. And so this is likely a good sign that this baby would probably not need um, therapy to maintain the ductus postnatally. These are pulmonary veins coming into the left atrium here. You can see right pulmonary veins here, a nice left pulmonary vein draining normally into that left atrium. So one from each side is what we try to look for. Here's the descending thoracic aorta. Actually, you're seeing a nice clear image of the azagous vein back here normal structure that drains to the SVC. And these are the uh, pulse Doppler tracings of the left pulmonary vein here and the right pulmonary vein here. Normal tracings. Looking at the intraatrial shunting here, and it's mostly blue, it should be blue because there's what we think is tricuspid valve atresia here. So any blood coming into this right atrium from the SVC and IVC need to sh needs to shunt across that foramen of valley because there's no egress from this chamber. And so it needs to get out of that chamber and to the left side of the heart. Nice color Doppler evaluation of the mitral valve inflow, nice and laminar here and then the outflow tract here. This subpulmonary region is laminar uh, anagrade flow shown. Again, here is the VSD. And this is the mitral valve inflow tracing, a nice normal appearing mitral valve inflow, normal velocity. 
and then a look at the VSD to subaortic region here, nice and laminar as well. Normal flow velocities, just at a glance from this color scale Nyquist limit here, they look undisturbed, both outflow tracks. And here is the subpulmonary or pulmonary valve tracing, a normal appearing tracing, and again, focused in on the subaortic aortic valve region here, pulsing that ascending aorta, and a normal tracing here with a heart rate of 143, which is normal for this fetus. And now this is a good example of how to align the aorta in an axial view. And so here you have an axial view and just sweeping up and you align the aorta as it courses up into the arch in the center of the sector here, in line with the plane of incination. And you can see how the aorta, as it arches up, it's straight up and down with the sector. And so there, you settle that part of the aorta into the middle of the sector, and then you transect the aorta orthogonal to this. You rotate 90 degrees from that view, and you will get here, is a good example, moving toward the aortic arch. And so here is the aortic arch, 90 degrees from that last view. Color Doppler shows antegrade flow through that part of the aorta and also through the ductus arteriosus. And so this is a good sign that there's antegrade flow through the ductus arteriosus. That means that the subpulmonary region is narrowed, but there is still antegrade flow through that pulmonary artery. May not be a ductal dependent lesion. And so here is that spectral Doppler tracing of that flow pattern through the ductus. And so now that we're in this sagittal view through the fetus as shown with the spine here, and you can see the aorta and the pulmonary artery here parallel uh, part of the ascending aorta and the pulmonary artery here and the foraminal flap bowing properly and specifically from right to left in a typical fashion within the left atrium. Here is the foraminal opening. It doesn't look restrictive. And as we sweep down through the ventricular mass, we're seeing the LV here. We're seeing a, a glimpse of the VSD into that smaller RV. Here's the VSD right here and you see the morphology of that mitral valve. Again, there's tricuspid valve atresia. We've already made that diagnosis. And we see that the mitral valve is a bileaflet valve and there are two papillary muscles. So we wanna keep looking at the ventricular morphology and sweeping appropriately from the base of the heart down toward the ventricular mass to look for any VSDs. And then we follow that up with color Doppler and make sure that with color Doppler we can see where the VSD is, what the shunting pattern is, and if there are more than one VSD. So here at the end of this sweep, you can see here VSD here, and it's a bit of a complex VSD. I think there's a conus muscle that separates it into two separate VSDs there here and here, but you get the, the picture of how we do these sweeps through this short axis of the heart. And here the bicaval view. There's ascending aorta, here's SVC, part of the IVC here, color Doppler, SVC, here is the pulmonary artery, left pulmonary artery here, coming down there, ascending aorta. Now taking a look at the IVC and the hepatic veins here, here's antegrade flow through the hepatic veins into the IVC. And we're going to pulse that with spectral Doppler here. And we're seeing antegrade flow, so systolic, diastolic, and an atrial reversal. Some significant atrial reversals in the hepatic veins. And so we're going to look back at the foramen of valley here. We're going to make sure that we can see whether or not there's a restriction of flow through that from the right atrium to the left atrium. And it doesn't look terribly accelerated, but because all of the flow coming back to this right atrium needs to go through this point because there is no tricuspid valve, there's no antegrade flow through a tricuspid valve, the pressure within the right atrium is elevated. 
And so even with this normally sized foraminal opening, you're going to get these pulsations that translate back or transmit back into the hepatic veins, the IVC, and the ductus venosus. And as you can see here, there are some atrial pulsations on the ductus venosus tracing as well. This is not uncommon for tricuspid atresia or right heart obstructive lesions like pulmonary atresia with intact ventricular septum where you have a small tricuspid valve and really no anti flow through the right heart because of the obstruction at the pulmonary valve level with pulmonary atresia. And so summary diagnosis, we have tricuspid valve atresia type 2B. This means detransposition of the great arteries with the anterior aorta and uh, rightward, again, detransposition with the rightward aorta. Uh, Multi-level pulmonary valve stenosis where you have subpulmonary narrowing with a subpulmonary conus, posteriorly deviated subpulmonary, subpulmonary conus with a dysplastic appearing pulmonary valve, which is likely stenotic postnatally. Uh, severely hypoplastic right ventricle with uh, it being the subaortic outlet chamber. That means the aortic valve or the aorta arises from this small right ventricle uh, and the LV pumps through a VSD to get to that aorta. The atrial septum, the inner atrial septum, the foraminal flap is aneurysmal and uh, bows left, uh, right to left with mild restriction and that's really just a volume related uh, restriction. And there's a left arch with a small ductus arteriosus with antegrade flow aorta to pulmonary artery. Thank you all so much for your attention.